next we look into microcontrollers. So, is the micro after looking into microprocessors. So, we have seen the microprocessors are um, basically the CPU. So, microcontrollers are uh, one step ahead. So, you can consider it as uh, computers. There are several microcontrollers. So, we will look into some of the um, standard ones or some of the well known microcontrollers. But uh, of course, uh, there are so many different uh, microprocessors and microcontrollers are available. So, it is not possible to uh, cover all of them uh, in any course. But anyway, so I uh, hope that uh, if you get uh, exposed to one of uh, those microcontrollers, then you can extrapolate those ideas to other microcontrollers and get the essential features there. So, 8051 happens to be one of the uh, very prominent microcontrollers uh, that are there in the market and the, its uh, architecture is, uh, 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 is guided by uh, the design of this uh, processor. And uh, uh, along with that, we have got essential modules like uh, say RAM, ROM and uh, um, timers and all those additional uh, peripherals. Okay. So, we will see them slowly. So, uh, uh, the basic components that you have in a microcontroller, the 8051 microcontroller, it has got 4 kilobytes of ROM, then 128 bytes of RAM. 4 uh, 8-bit I/O ports, 2 16-bit timers or counters, and one serial interface. So this is the chip uh, that we have. Okay, so there are various manufacturers. So this is from one such manufacturer. Now microcontrollers, so they are uh, uh, they can be considered as single chip computer. So, if you remember that in a computer system, uh, we need uh, the components like the processor which is the CPU, then we need some memory for that and out of that memory some part is uh, the will hold the program. So, that is, uh, so they are not going to change. So, they can be the ROM part, then there will be some part where we will be storing some uh, data. So, that is the RAM part because that will require read write access. And apart from that, since the system uh, computer system needs to interact with the outside world, so there must be some uh, I/O ports. Okay, so uh, for example, in uh, uh, 885 also we have seen that you can uh, use you can connect some I/O devices to the ports uh, to the uh, data bus line and get it as I/O port. So similarly, we can have some I/O port here. And some other important uh, thing component like a serial communication that is also uh, important because for single bit communication, so the serial communication is useful. And when you are designing a system, then many a times what we need to do is that the events will uh, needed, needed to be occurred uh, at some particular instance of time. So that way we need some very precise timing. Okay, so, uh, we can put some delays using instructions uh, and looping like that, but uh, that delay you can understand that we cannot uh, go to a very refined level of granularity. Because if you, even if you take the smallest uh, say simplest possible instruction like the NOP instruction, so that requires the one complete machine cycle. So, one machine cycle the, the, the fetch cycle that is a 4 T state and 4 T state uh, you, so you cannot have a delay of 1 T state in that processor. So, that is the problem. So, you need some external timer or counter chip to be connected to the processor. So, if you really want some precise timing. So, uh, for a system operation, so these are the things that we should have. Now, uh, what is uh, done in uh, 80 in the microcontrollers is that all these components they are put onto a single chip. So, what are the advantage? Advantages are like this that first of all uh, the overall system size becomes small. So, instead of having single uh, separate chips mounted on a board, now in a single chip you have got all these components. So, overall size of the system becomes smaller. Second important thing is about the speed, like when you have got the different components mounted on a printed circuit board, so between them the connection is the, uh, the copper line. Okay. So, copper line connection so since they are external to the chip, so they will be much slower compared to the on chip uh, that is within the chip if I have connection. So, that uh, compared to that this off chip connections are going to be slower. So, if you are looking for the speed enhancement, so it is better that all these components uh, be put into the same silicon chip okay? and that is exactly what is happening in microcontroller that all these components they are put onto a single chip. However, 
So, you cannot put the resources uh, to a very large value otherwise the size of the chip will become very, um, very large, the footprint of the chip will become large. So, uh, 8051 it has got 4 kilobytes of internal ROM. So, you can uh, program this 8051 to load some uh, program onto this ROM. Okay. So, that is, that, that is the internal ROM. Then the RAM space is really small, 128 bytes only and you will see that it is multiplexed in different ways also. Of course, you can connect external uh, ROM and RAM chips to the microcontroller uh, to uh, extend the total available memory that we will see, uh, but internally it is like that. So, if your system is very simple, it may be that with 4 kilobyte of internal ROM and 128 bytes of RAM, so we can realize the system. For example, if you are implementing a traffic light controller, so it may be possible that the system is very simple and we can do it with a single 8051 microcontroller instead of ha instead of having separate RAM and ROM chips onto the board. Four uh, 8 bit I O ports have been provided. So, that helps uh, that is a large number. So, 8 bit into 4 that is total 32 bit I O that uh, the processor can support okay, without any additional hardware. Then two 16 bit timers counters are there. So, we can uh, so that can do some precise timing calculations. So, you can uh, you can control the timing and you can also count some event that has occurred externally. So, how many say if you are measuring if you are uh, counting the items passing on a conveyor belt. So, passing up every component or every item may be uh, uh, sending a pulse to the counter and accordingly the counter will find out uh, will count the how many such items have passed. And serial interface, so this is useful for uh, doing some serial communication to uh, uh, other devices. So, if you look into the internal block diagram of uh, 8051, so as we have said that uh, on a bus, so these are the components that are hanging. So, we have got 4 kilobytes of ROM, 128 bytes of RAM, 4 IO ports, 1 serial port, there are 2 timers, timer 1 and timer 2. And we have got this uh, bus control. So, bus control will be controlling the um, operation. There are the processing unit which will be doing the processing. So, uh, when we are do discussing about the microprocessors, actually we discussed about this CPU only, assuming this that this uh, ROM, RAM, timers, uh, IO ports, and serial, com the serial communication was also made part of CPU. But most of the components are outside. But in case of microcontroller, all of them are together. So, in the uh, we have got this CPU then the interrupt, con interrupt control and the oscillator that will be generating the clock signal. So, that will be uh, coming from the uh, that will be uh, controlling the CPU. So, this is the internal block diagram of 8051. Other features that we have in 8051 is only one on chip oscillator. So, that is external only one uh, oscillator is there for the clock generation, 6 interrupt sources. So, we have got uh, this external interrupts. So, there are uh, two external interrupts and uh, there are uh, three internal interrupts in terms of that reset, serial input output and the timers. Okay. So, two timers, one serial input output and the reset. So, these are the six interrupt sources that we have. Then we have got 64 kilobyte of external code space. Okay. So, that is for the program memory. So, this is uh, so internally we have got uh, um, internally we have got 4 kilobyte. So, you have got 4 kilobyte of ROM. So, if you are connecting external memory, so you can go up to 64 kilobyte of external space, external uh, ROM. For the data memory part, so it, it is again another 64 kilobyte of external data memory. So, code memory and data memory if you take it separately, so it is 64 plus 64 total 128 uh, kilobyte of memory that you can connect to the 8051 system. Out of that half of it will be program memory, half of it will be data memory. In many uh, realizations what we do is that we merge this code and data memory together and we get uh, only 64 kilobyte as the external memory. So, which uh, can be configured both as data memory and program memory. So, that may be useful in many applications. Now, when you are uh, act, uh, using this external uh, memory, external code memory, so there is a strobe which is known as the program store en enable or PSN. So, this uh, P PSN bit, so the, the, this uh, particular uh, bit, so it will be controlling the uh, read operation. On the other hand, for the data memory access, so we have got this read and write. 
So, in case of uh, normal process around 8085, we have seen that whenever we are trying to access the outside the, the memory, so there were read and control, read and write controls. So, for ROM access, only the read line should be connected to the read of the ROM. For the RAM access, the read and write lines are to be connected to the read and write pins of the RAM. But in case of 8051, since program memory and data memory are totally separate, okay. So, the program memory is controlled by this uh, PSEN signal, PSEN signal, whereas the data memory is controlled by read and write signal. So, when the 8051 is accessing, uh, 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 is accessing uh, program code, so it will not activate this uh, read, uh, read and write signal. So, we have to be careful in our design because then it will be through the, the strobe given will be on the uh, this program store enable line. On the other hand, when it is doing the read access or uh, data access, so it will be activating only the read and write lines, not the uh, PSEN line. So, we have uh, so that way we have to be careful. And this code memory is selectable by this EA external access. So, whether uh, as we said that there is 4 kilobyte of external memory, so you can uh, uh, so you can at any point of time you can say whether you want to access external memory or internal memory. So, that way you can have this EA, so this external access there is a pin that you can configure and you can set it to uh, 0 or 1 accordingly you are the instruction will access internal memory or external memory for code access. And we can as we are, as I have already said that we may have external uh, memory as both data and code, so that is possible. So, why this 8051 all on a sudden came? So, this is this has come because of the new type of systems that we have, they are known as embedded systems. So, an embedded system, it is closely integrated with the main system and it, uh, so this, so it may be that in the overall system, this embedded system is a part. For example, uh, the say uh, the washing machine. So, washing machine has got uh, the interfaces which are for the outside world. So, they will give, see a set of buttons, but internally there are computations like when the drum is rotated, for how many turns it will be rotated, what will be the temperature and uh, it will sense the um, water level and all that. So, all those are done by the uh, done by the embedded system or when you are driving a car, there are many processors we are, which are controlling different operations starting from this steering, fuel injection anti-brake, then, then the, this the braking system, uh, this airbags, then we have got power windows and all that. So, all of them are uh, processors are there who are doing this computation, but from the user's point of view, so we do not see those processors, so we just see the overall system. So, that these are the examples of embedded system. So, these processors, they may not directly interact with the uh, environment, they may be interacting with the um, uh, with the uh, with uh, with the over the system into which it is put into, so it is uh, it is a part of a bigger system, so it may be interacting with the bigger system. So a typical example is the car ignition control. Okay, so that is uh, so that as I have already said, there are many such processors in the uh, in the car in a car that will be uh, uh, that will uh, help in running uh, driving the car and its uh, control. So, uh, an embedded product uses microprocessor or microcontroller to do one task only. So, the task is fixed like when you are driving a car, so the operations that these processors need to do that is fixed. Okay. So, the, on a car processor, I will not try to say run a program which will find the roots of a quadratic equation. So, will not do that, but the processor is uh, doing other things like this fuel injection, steering control and all that. So, those are being done. So, uh, they are doing only one task at a time. So, uh, if you are using microprocessor as I have said that okay, uh, the size of the system may become large. So, as a result we are uh, doing some, uh, we are putting a microcontrollers and since we are doing only a single application or a, only a small set of applications on a, on a microcontroller based system or an embedded system. So, we know the uh, programs that we need to execute. So, we can burn those program to the ROM directly. So, uh, unlike a general system where different users may come up with different programs, so we need to load that programs on, onto RAM and from there we need to execute, but for an embedded application the programs are fixed. Okay? So, that so we, we can just uh, load, we can burn those programs onto the ROM, so that 
this uh, programs can those only those programs will be executed by the processor. So, that is uh, the point where this uh, 8051 may be useful. Typical examples of embedded system like keyboard, printer, video game, game player, mp3 music players, so embedded monitors, mobile phones, cameras, okay. So, automotive control. So, all these are uh, different examples of embedded systems. So, they have got these processors uh, built into it. Now, how do you choose a microcontroller? Like, as I have said that there are several microcontrollers available in the market and in fact, 8051 also there are variants. Okay? So, we have got 8031, we have got 8052 like that and their capacities are varying like uh, the 8031 will not have any internal ROM. 8052 will have one more timer in it. So, that way the, uh, the features will uh, vary. So, which one to take? Okay? So, so for the criteria for choosing a microcontroller is first of all the meeting the computing needs of the task efficiently and cost effectively. So, speed uh, should match the amount of uh, the speed of the processor should match my requirement they, because most of the time this embedded applications that we have. So, they are real time in nature. So, uh, so the, the, the task has to be completed within some fixed amount of time. So, if the processor is slow, so we will not be able to complete the task within uh, the reasonable amount of time. So, the speed of the processor is uh, one parameter. Then the amount of ROM and RAM that we have in the system. If the ROM is small and my application have program size is large, then I need to connect external uh, memory to the chip. So, that way the footprint uh, will go up. Okay, so, we can have uh, if we take if we go for a higher uh, family of microcontroller then possibly my program will fit into the ROM that is available there and we will be able to uh, 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 hold that uh, task within the microcontroller itself. And the RAM also like how much of uh, data that we need to store okay, the basically the temporary data that we have. So, how much of those temporary data that we need to store. For example, 8051 it has got only 128 bytes of RAM internal RAM. So, if you need uh, more RAM space, then you have to connect external RAM chip. So, how is it? Uh, um, uh, so, are we going to do that? So, if my uh, if we find that going to the next higher family, so I can manage the RAM space, uh, the variables, then possibly that is fine. Number of I O ports like we can have uh, 8051, it has got 32 I O bits or uh, 4 I O ports. And so, if that is sufficient, then it is okay. If it is not, we have to go for the higher one the timers number of timers that we have. So, each timer may be dedicated for controlling one operation. So, if you need precise timing for say more than two operation then possibly and they are par parallelly. So, then possibly we cannot uh, go for 8051. Then size of the system, its packaging, its power consumption. So, they all will contribute to the choice of uh, the microcontroller. Second important thing is the upgradation. So, today we are using some microcontroller. So, tomorrow we, we can we can we go to the next higher microcontroller in my system. As a result, the system performance will be enhanced and uh, but at the same time I do not want to change the hardware that we have uh, too much. Okay? So, the pin configuration and uh, this uh, thing, so the, the software compatibility, so they should be there. So, they, it should be easy to upgrade and the cost per unit. So, when you are when you have built a system based on a microcontroller then every unit that you sell the microcontroller price will come into uh, picture. So, if the cost per unit is uh, not low then the cost of the system may get dominated by the cost of the microcontroller. So, that way we have to be careful. Second important thing that we have is the availability of software development tools. Now, as some time back I have said that, that there are so many uh, microprocessors and microcontrollers that you, you possibly cannot learn about the assembly language programming of all those, um, all those processors. So, it is desirable that we can write our program, our control program in some high level language like say C and then the compiler should be there which will translate this C code into the machine code of the uh, processor. So, these assemblers, debuggers, uh, compilers, emulators, simulator, uh, technical support, so all these should be available for the microcontroller that we take. Wide availability, it should be widely available and there is reliable sources for the microcontroller. So, we should have the, the, these easily easy availability you can say okay, and it is available in large amounts. 
So, these are the criteria that will uh, guide us to uh, choose the microcontroller. So, as you can see that some of these decisions are based uh, on the uh, um, uh, electronics that we have like this uh, speed, uh, amount of ROM, RAM, etc. But many of them are economic also like say availability of uh, availability and uh, of reliable resources and all that. So, they are not there and similarly the development platform. So, they, they do not uh, that is not again the part of the basic hardware. So, they are the additional things that are done by the vendor to uh, promote the product so that uh, the developers can use those platform to uh, develop product on uh, or develop uh, applications on that product. So, that way you see that many decisions are not uh, done based or solely based on the quality of the processor, but the quality of other things as well. If you look into this 8051 family, then uh, this uh, this uh, ROM type, so 8031 it does not have any ROM, 8051, 8052, then 8751, 8752, so 8051 they have got mask ROM, 80, uh, uh, 8751 they have got EEPROM, so they are electrically programmable ROM and uh, so and then we have got flash EEPROM in 89 series. So, 89 series has got so many processors and they have got uh, they have got e, e from electrically erasable uh, programmable read only memory. So, we have so these are some of the examples that you see. So, this uh, first uh, two words uh, so they will tell the manufacturer the AT stands for Atmel, C stands for the technology the CMOS technology and LV is the low power version ok. So, the supply voltage is low 3.0 volt whereas, the normal processor the supply voltage will be 5 volt. So, uh, this way there are many vendors of this uh, 8051 series of processors and accordingly you can find out the uh, you can find you can see the series number there. So, if you try to compare across these family members, so this uh, we are just comparing the 89 series. So, 8951 which is basically the 8051 only. So, it is 4 kilobyte of RAM uh, ROM 128 bytes of RAM 2 timers. 6 interrupt sources and 32 IO pins. 8952 or 8052 it has got 8 kilobytes of uh, ROM, 256 bytes of RAM. So, you see the ROM and RAM have been doubled, then timer is also one more, interrupt sources are also two more, IO pin remains same. 8953, so they, they are the ROM size is increasing further. So, you see that we have got many choices, ok. So, we have got many choices, so based on the uh, application that we have we can we can go for um, additional um, the higher family of processor. And this one uh, this uh, 891051 and 892051, so they have got some additional things like watchdog timer. So, they are uh, useful when you have when you have got some deadlines for tasks and you want to detect whether uh, the task has missed its deadline or not. So, for those type of applications, so we need this watchdog timers. So, then the analog comparator, so analog voltage comparator, then the in system programmable that is when the, the system is operating, so can you change the program. So, those uh, uh, series, so the AC, so marked as AC, so they have got these features. So, naturally uh, the better processors, uh, we have got better flexibility uh, facilities, but the cost of the system will also go up. So, this is the overall uh, diagram that we have. So, we will explain it by parts ok. So, uh, so in the schematic, so this is a better view of the processor. So, you can see that ok, we have got, I said that there are 4 ports. So, this is P0, P1, P2 and P3. So, these are the 4 ports that we have and uh, um, uh, they are all 8 bit ports. Then we have got this uh, RST which is the reset ok. Then there is EA bar external access. So, these the, so they are actually this RST and EA bar. So, they are coming to the uh, chip. So, they are input to the chip. It is not shown here explicitly. So, this uh, so this uh, EA bar. So, if this line is made 0 that means, uh, the, the system designer wants that the 8051 should use the co code space from the external memory. It should take the code from the external memory, external ROM. And for normal operation, we should set this, set this EA bar pin to 1. So, if this pin is made high, then uh, the 8051 when it is accessing code, it will be uh, using the internal RAM, internal ROM. And uh, we have got this, uh, 
So, many of these uh, pins, so they are multiplex like you see that this P0 or the port 0, the bit, uh, so the, these pins are pin number 32 to 39. So, they act as the port pin as well as the multiplexed address data bus AD0 through AD7. So, here also like 8085 the bus is multiplexed. So, we have got this um, uh, lower order address bus and uh, data bus multiplexed AD0 to AD7. Then uh, if you look into port 2, here also you see that the uh, it is the, uh, the pins they are multifunctional pin and it they can they will act as IO pin as well as the higher order address bus. So, if you are connecting some external memory then this uh, 8, so this all these pins 21 to 28 and uh, 20, uh, 20, 32 to 39. So, they will be used by the uh, external data bus, external address and data bus. So, you cannot use those ports for uh, uh, IO device uh, for IO operation. Okay. Similarly, if you look into this port 3, you will find that uh, these pins are also multiplex. That is pin number uh, 3, uh, the pin number 17, it's, it acts as the bit 7 of port P3 as well as the read bar signal. So, when if you are connecting external memory then this read bar, write bar lines uh, are required and then you cannot use this port 3 as the um, port uh, for accessing as port bits. Okay. So, all these are there similarly this uh, 3.0 is used for receive data and 3.1 is used for transmit data. So, these, these are for serial communication like we have got SID and SOD in case of 8085. So, here we have got TXD and RXD. Then these are the two interrupts that we have from outside INT0 and INT1. Then this T0 and T1, so they are for uh, uh, the counter operation of the timers. Okay. And then this uh, ALE is same as uh, that we have in 8085. And PSN bar, so this is for the external memory access. The uh, you can uh, give the uh, you can connect to the uh, read power pin of the ROM. Okay. Then we have got the crystals.